everybody. Richard Dolan here for a courageous conversation. Well, I mean, the day, you're right. There's no going back. How do you do? You feel the weight of that that desire? Yeah, I have been there for a while. Stories still being written, and you cut the story short. As they say, I'm playing with house money. They said, Ah, neo fascist. You can't imagine, Richard. I've heard everything now. But I'll tell you what, you ain't never buying your time back. Value your time. Once you start a courageous conversation, there ain't ever going back to an ordinary one. We're happy to see you. Today's a very special edition of what we've come to call Courageous Conversations. And uh, I know that there's a few things very unusual about this one, none of which describes the guests or the host for that matter. But we have disabled the chat room, which is a little unusual because this is a very live event, but it is a very global event with, uh, well, very large stakes here today. I mean, for those who are here for the Duchess of York, Sarah Ferguson, show of hands. You got it. You got it. So we're here to protect and honor her life, her legacy, her view, her love, and all the things that are important to her. So chat room is disabled. Um, you do have, however, your reactions down at the very bottom. Uh, if you feel inclined to give me some love, you know, think I'm doing a job, or perhaps want to applaud someone, or perhaps just you just came to celebrate, you can use your icons, your emoticons, your reactions because the Duchess loves that. So with all of you here, as we have folks dialing in from around the world, it is quite a global conversation. First of its kind, in fact, because what we're also simultaneously doing is bringing light and love to a conversation about ladies around the world, their role, their responsibility, the opportunity, the magic, the power, the possibility, and all the glory that comes with all the women in our lives. And if you've not yet today said, I love you to a woman that matters to you, you better do that right now. If not, shoot a text, let them know. Uh, or perhaps you've already done that because first thing this morning you went, buenos dias. Hola. Mi amor. Que paso? So with that being said, we are going to be here doing great things. Uh, I am so happy to have our friends from around the world uh, friends from all throughout Latin America are here. Folks from around Europe, across the country, continent is here. We have folks from around the world. Canada in the house, USA in the house. Uh, we have friends as far, as far as uh, India, Portugal, Spain, uh, even through the Orient. We are delighted that you're here because this is a very interesting call, given that it's, well, different times and different places. So we're going to get started in about five minutes, and I just want to make sure that I gave a chance for everyone to log in as the Duchess's office is actually online and with us. Uh, we'll be joining her shortly, but I want to just take a look and see who's here. Uh, everyone from the most amazing people, uh, such as, of course, Christine Granzado from Toronto, Maria Escobar from Miami. We've got my brother here from Naran, Kalathungam, Toronto in the house. We've got the persons in the house from Edmonton. Tara Flynn, what's going on, girl? From Alberta, Bethany Fisher, Keith UT, Anna Cortez, Daniela Lombardi, what's up, girl? Samantha Roberts, Scott Campbell, Vincent Sundar, Will Wynn, best dressed today, uh, fresh shaven, fresh. I haven't seen someone wear a tie in probably about a year now, so that is good for you, my friend. But it's also good to see Linda curled up, headphones on, coffee in hand, and Steve Druth in the mobile office of uh, Druth Enterprises. So they have Kai, of course, as always, Nima representing Africa, Brian, Wong, Suzanne, Malloy, Zaleski. Good to see you, darling. That's it, Esther. Soak it in there, girl. I see you. I see you guys. I see you, Jim Canale, my man. How are you, my brother? Good to see you. Long time no see. Sarai, Momo, Paulo, Montreal representing. Good to see Kyle, Grace, Ufa. What's up, Lisa and Mike, Dr. Alla, Adriana, Dabney. How are you, Catherine? Of course, Katie, Katie Shea, Jasmine representing Scotland. We've got Stuttgart, Germany in the house. Yusuf, what's up? Shelly Visser, Rob Aiketa, always representing all cool things. It's good to have Kim and Lauren and Rob, of course, Justin and Jay, Angela and Bob, Erica. It's good to have Adriana, Angela, Raylene. It's good to have all of you here from Lacey to Jennifer to Tony, Shannon, Isabella, Lisa, Lauren, Kim Patton, Matt Soltis representing All Good Things Montreal right now. And uh, Paige, of course, good to have you. And of course, Isabella completing Vincent's picture. 
But we're going to get started, folks, because uh, we're here for a very special day. And um, as you may or may not know, the Duchess of York is an extraordinary human being. And I think that when you read her bio, when you look through, whether it's the Wikipedia pages, whether you're looking at things like her bio or, or biographies, whether you've read any one of her books, books about her, books written by her, whether you've watched shows, interviews, things that she's produced, she's written, or she's been at the cause of, there seems to be this constant unfolding of the Duchess of York. Sarah Ferguson has been an incredible force in the world and likely and largely because of the story that she's lived. And I mean, for a lot of people here, especially as we talk about uh, the women in our lives, the women of the world, whether you're a mother, a grandmother, uh, both of which she is, um, she has not escaped life unscathed by uh, downturns and turnabouts. And uh, we're not here for that today. Today, we're not talking about where she once stood. We are here to talk to her about where she now stands. At 61 years of age, she's been known as a, a, a philanthropeneur, uh, one who gives, one who provides, but also one who understands the world of business. This is largely why her success in the world of Weight Watchers was so profound. In all worlds of publications, uh, children's books, and even other incredible undertakings, such as solar panels and providing solar energy to parts of the world who haven't even been able to turn on a light bulb. So the woman the myth, the legend, all things describing uh, the Duchess of York is a real delight to chat with her today. So we're going to have what we've come to call a courageous conversation. Now, this is not a courageous conversation as in I'm going to ask her things that will make her uncomfortable. Those parameters have been set. This is a very delicate but very delightful conversation to honor Sarah Ferguson, to in fact bring life and love to her view of her legacy. And for one thing for me, I have to say before she goes live, been with us. Um, it is a profound honor to be with her. The time that we spent just recently, I mean, we had about 92 minutes. I, I wasn't keeping count of the minutes, by the way, but goodness gracious, uh, I've fallen in love with who she is, what she stands for, and T, uh, to, to top it all off, because she also understands the importance of things like familyhood, the importance of bringing strong children in heart and in mind and in soul and in emotion, because happy children lead to happy women and happy mothers give rise to happy homes and happy homes gives rise to a happy village called earth called this place called life. And all these things are a part of her legacy that I'm delighted to be here with you to have her tell you a bit more about what is really truly inspiring her and inspiring others. So who here by show of hands is excited emoticons up. Oh yeah. I'm taking a look. Delightful. Shelly, we've missed you. Good to see you. It's good to see Deanna Boyden in the house. It's good to have Colin here. It's good to have Marjean, Beverly Hills in the house, and Bach, Anna Juarez, good to see you. It's good to have Brenda Gilbert. My dear, how are you today? I trust you're well. Co-founder of, of course, All Things Brawn. And I'm going to come up to say hello to Brenda. I want to ask if she could, as I'll unmute her for a moment before I go to introduce the Duchess of York. Uh, Brenda, first and foremost, how are you, my dear? I'm doing well. How are you, Richard? Well, this is exciting for us because we've we've embarked on a on, a, on an adventure called Braun Legacy, being able to search the world, find and secure great stories, great leaders, great icons that covers uh, a plethora of, of realms of influence that shape our cultures, our countries, uh, but more importantly, our children. And uh, you are a powerhouse that represents as not only the co-founder but really the brains of the operation over there at Braun. <laughs> Not kidding, just kidding. Uh, but Brenda, what, what excites you most uh, about today joining the Duchess here uh, with us live digitally around the world? I'm definitely hearing her story, uh, just the connectivity to, that she has to her children, the emotional connectivity to she, that all people across the world globally. Those are the types of stories that we make at Braun, just in terms of the emotionality, but just as the educational, the informative um, components of things. So it's really, really important to hear her story straight from her mouth, as opposed to something that's very salacious and exploitive. Um, hearing what she wants to do in the world and what her contributions are in terms of also sustainability. Oh, I love that. I love that. And I mean, just uh, my hat goes off to you. I'm grateful for the work that you and Aaron are doing. I'm looking forward to seeing him soon and uh, really honored to be a part of a Braun movement in the world. Uh, congratulations to all the nominations, the wins um, at the Golden Globes, the nominations at the Oscars. Uh, I am praying, I am pulling, 
and I am posting everything that you guys are standing for this year. A special one indeed, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely, and thank you, Richard, for inviting me here as well, and look forward to doing many, many, many projects with you. No, lovely. Well, we're just beginning, and it's all about the legacy. So that was uh, Brenda Gilbert joining us. Uh, a real delight to have her here, of course, representing her family legacy, all things Braun uh, in the house. So I'm going to take a look here. I know my team is on the lookout because Antonia Marshall, you're here. I know you're here, uh, the office of, of the Duchess, um, but I'm making sure I can track down and find what device the Duchess would be coming in because I'm not sure if, if, if she's carrying the phone, Antonia, that uh, actually says, I have arrived the Duchess in the house. I'm not quite sure. Is, is that how it would be described? Hi, Richard. Um, so she's coming in on her iPad. Uh, you'll see Sarah Ferguson. She should be dialing in in just a minute. Lovely, lovely. Well, it's good to see you at the beach as always uh, <laughs> in, in the downtown UK proper. And just as I've got you on the line, I just want to make sure I acknowledged you, my dear, because behind every great leader, I mean, man or woman, uh, the Duchess, no exception, they're always seems to be a far more powerful person that is always fused with three great things, power, presence, and poise. And you've got all three to really not only uh, champion the Duchess, uh, represent her livelihood, uh, really manage, guide, and in some way protect the magic that she represents. So I want to acknowledge you for being uh, such a delight to work with, to collaborate with, uh, and to to be my partner in the process of really even entering this conversation. So, so on behalf of everyone here, I want to thank you. Oh, thank you, Richard. That's so kind. I think also uh, Lacey, who's somewhere I can't, I can't find anyone on this call, but I think she's somewhere. Um, but Richard, I think I've just got a message. I think she's trying to dial in now. So oh, you lovely. might see pop into a waiting room. Well, lovely. Well, and I do want to acknowledge Lacey as I'm coming up to mute you out so that uh, we don't interrupt the, the signals. But um, yes, of course, Lacey, um, yourself and the entire office, we just want to make sure we gave you an advance. Uh, thank you and hello. Uh, on that note. So as I'm looking around, I'm playing both uh, mission control and of course, uh, managing a party of 101 uh, very good looking people here, I must say. Uh, none of the credit goes to any of the men here, especially Rob Baiketa or Mark Jean from Beverly Hills, uh, or of course, Jim Canale. Um, but the reality is, uh, welcome everyone from around the world. Richard Dolan here for a courageous conversation. We're going to get started. Uh, I'm taking a look to see if we've unmuted the Duchess of York. Uh, it's not every day you get to say that out loud. You know, I'm going to go and unmute the Duchess of York. I, I wouldn't have ever thought my day would have started uh, actually saying those very words. But as my team is uh, searching for her iPad, and I'm searching myself as well, it would appear that, uh, oh, hello, Lacey, I see you. But we're taking a look to see where, in fact, she is. So she will arrive momentarily. And I know that we've also provided you Antonia Controls as well, just so you have it. I think you've got that thumbs up, yes. Fantastic. And uh, I believe we have Sarah Ferguson, also known as the Duchess of York. Good day, my dear. How are you? Richard, I can't believe you've been talking so much because I've heard every single word you've said since three minutes past three. And I was screaming at the iPad going, let me in for heaven's sake. What is going on here? I was also thrilled that to uh, hear all of your effusiveness towards Antonia, who's what are you talking about behind every great leader there is somebody pulling it together you can't imagine Richard I've heard everything now I mean we're in Britain so we don't need to have quite so much um, hot air but you know fine fine um, so I realized then you don't need me on the call Antonia can do it then if she obviously anyway so moving on uh, Brenda I was thrilled you go to the Tower of London now, Rich. Um, I, Brenda, I was thrilled with what you were saying. It was great to listen to. And uh, Richard mentioned something which I find fascinating, is that you've nominated and got Golden Globes and Oscars. And I literally feel so ignorant. Could you tell me what you've been nominated for, Brenda, please? I just unmuted her. And by the way, I'm just trying to be proper, you know, Duchess. I'm just trying to keep things proper here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead, Brenda. Yeah. First, lovely to meet you. Um, uh, the, such a pleasure. Um, and all looking forward to hearing about what you're doing and your legacy, of course. But the nominations are for, um, with our partners, um, Judas and the Black Messiah with six nominations, Greyhound with one nomination, uh, and Pieces of a Woman with one nomination. So eight nominations in total with our partners where we were producers and executive producers. I mean, but that's uh, that's just beyond beyond, isn't it? So you're up against Emerald Fennell, aren't you? Isn't she promising young women? That's right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, 
it, it's just um, I, I'm just really proud um, of anyone that's nominated and and any just a nomination is phenomenal you know and then just I'm be watching now I, you know I love rooting for people so I shall be now watching going go Brenda go and uh, I just want to say I just want to say Brenda you know I love that the BR of Bron is you and I love what you've what you've achieved I love what you're doing and uh, and uh, it, I think uh, to communicate is my favorite thing in the world. So, so I just wanted to say it's great you've come on. I know you know Leonard Brody really well too, and Leonard's a great friend of mine and um, out of Canada. And uh, I just am here, so you know I can. Um, I, I just, I, I, I guess once you get to sixty-one years old and you've, um, and you've been through every single uh, twenty, thirty-two years of the Daily Mail, you're sitting here as a real, authentic person who's just going hi here I am so that's why if you think that I gave Richard a hard time it's because it was fun and I don't worry it's a sense of humor it's the British sense of humor that is in force I'm afraid because it was just fun because I loved listening to it because I kept pressing this my iPad going let me in Richard let me in and I know he was struggling poor man he kept trying to keep it going thinking I was late I wasn't late Brenda wasn't no. late I know and it's not every day. And well, thank you so much. And I know that uh, your, your heartfelt wishes for Brenda Braun studios and all things uh, Braun legacy is, is definitely heard, but, but let's just start from the top because, because the whole world is here. We're delighted that you've joined us. And I, I don't know, you've been known as the Duchess of York, but I've also known that you don't mind Fergie Dutchie, but your favorite is Dutchy doodle. So what shall I reference you as? Where would you like me to start from and hold out? With. Well, um, Richard, Richard, I know you're protocolized um, uh, at the moment. So uh, the thing is, is that when I got married, uh, most people call, walk their dogs called it Fergie. Um, so uh, when I was walking through the park, they'd go Fergie, and I'd sort of turn around hundreds of times. Uh, and then uh, you could then Fergie, I suppose, turns into Dutchy. And then it, because I'm mad about the the legacy is for children, smile of a child, and the joy of a child's heart, and the health of a nation from the heart. And I am speaking to you all who's listening to me from the heart. Um, I uh, don't mind really what anyone wants to call me. And um, but you know, if you want to be formal before you you go to the Tower of London, which you will in a minute with the Raven Pie, Richard, um, is that uh, you the Duchess? If we're being formal, and then if we're being informal, hey you is fine. That works. Hey you, or, or just Duchy or Dutch, Dutch. I kind of like Dutch actually. My my China Chinese friend uh, David Tang used to say Dutch and scream it across everywhere. All right, so uh, Dutch, uh, Duchy. <laughs> Uh, Dutch and the Duchess. Uh, first and foremost, tell me how is family? How is life as a grandmother? Um, th th it's um, it's where I'm happiest because because of course I just sit there um, from the distance because we're not allowed to see uh, see them yet because of the social distancing. But um, it's great because I can just admire my beautiful, beautiful, incredible ambassador, usually aged thirty, whatever she is, um, be the finest mother I've ever seen. So. I, I think one of the best things I've ever achieved is global mothering. And uh, I, uh, they, my children have donated me to the world and now they, they're donating uh, granny to the world. So uh, my job is to bring joy to children globally. And, and what would you look forward to most in, in being a grandmother to, to your future generation? What, what, is that, what does that show up for you as? What do you look forward to most given you've not seen them yet? Uh, well, well, I think the most important thing is first and foremost health, mm -hmm. and, uh, and 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 you know I just look at usually. Then I look at August, um, Augie, and I I I just think how lucky that he has you know everything working well. I mean, one of my uh, next children's books is about. Uh, uh, children that some blind children and some children in a wheelchair and I I feel really strongly that we must do a big shout out for healthy children and fetal research and uh, and really just really helping uh, people to go through pregnancy safely so that's what I'm hoping for and of course um, you know I spend much more time uh, so I used to buy uh, Barbie dolls and cars and caravan sets for my children, but I didn't let them play with it till I'd made it, right? I had to make the model and stick the stickers on. It had to be exactly right. 
So um, my children had more Barbie sets than you can name. So I think Augie might have a few things, a bit of a problem because I'll be taking it away from him before I give it to him to make sure I make it, you know, type thing. Well, well, you've been noted to be this you know, self-proclaimed, of course, I have to qualify that as, as, as the world's greatest mom. Do, do you find some of those obsessive qualities of yours in the girls? Do you see them popping up in, in, in who they are as women today? Uh, you know, uh, it's quite interesting because the other day uh, for Mother's Day, they gave me the most beautiful frame and beautiful things. And they said, Mom, you, you don't look as though you're really excited to receive this present. And I said... <laughs> I said, no, I'm just blown away. I'm being reflective about how genius you are and how clever you are. And you've learned all my tricks. So now I've got to go to another level of outsmarting you guys. I'm so impressed. And then I saw Eugenie um, writing letters already to thank people for their kind. And it wasn't an email. It wasn't a WhatsApp. It was modern etiquette, which is what I love to stand for, which is a handwritten note uh, on, a, on just taking that moment, putting a stamp on it and putting it in the letterbox. And I think, or if you really want to go modern etiquette and be really cool, you could write the letter in your own handwriting and then WhatsApp it so that they at least know someone that you've taken the time to do it. So you're taking etiquette and making it modern. You know, since you're on that, Duchess, you know, it's amazing that when we first met and we started to chat, you had asked about my mother and you caught something in the conversation. It was the very beginning of our conversation. And, um, and I don't want to make this about her, but what I found very poignant and very powerful, and if anyone's writing down notes, I would write this down, is that when, when you're as present as the Duchess was and she exhibited to be, she wanted to know the answer to a question, which was just what my mother's name was. And the entire conversation felt like it was in honor of her. That's right, Bibi, you, you remember, my, my, my late mother. And, and, I, and I just want to know, being present, how tough is that for you as a mother, as a grandmother, given the stature you've had, the history you've got? That is. Um, that was very, yeah. by the way, that was super apropos right there. That was just perfect. Me asking you about being present and, and, and how no, hard yeah. that must be. <laughs> uh, uh, no. So just so you know, I've also enclosed, enclosed a note to Bibi in here. Um, oh. Because although Bibi's not with us, why are we not celebrating Bibi? Because she made you and you're a cool, girl, cool dude. So I, therefore, cool dudes. And also Nadia's in here too, don't worry. Yeah. And Theo with one T. So we, we got this, Richard. We What's got it? this. You see, and um, I just wanted you to show that that is being present. It is. It's you. I believe that uh, to be where you are right now and legacy and leading by example for women empowerment, for the health of a nation, the smile of a child, is to is to live right this second, right now. So on this call with you, Richard, which is why old chatterbox me was going so mad I couldn't unmute the screen my poor fingers broken because i was pressing it so hard um that 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 i am with you and the hundreds and thousands of, of, of whatever i'm doing i'm just talking to you but i don't know who i'm talking to but anyway never mind i'll just rattle on and no, uh, and that's being present because i'm i want to honor everybody that's taken the time to have a jump on today thank you thank you all and I think that's really important. And we thank you, by the way, um, being a cool dude. I've been called worse, but being called a cool dude by the Duchess, I will take that to the bank. So thank you, dear. Um, but with all that being said, I'm, I want to make sure that everyone really sees that, especially all of my friends and family from Braun, is that what you celebrate is, is this term, uh, your legacy. A part of it is, is, is familyhood. And, and being present is not a, a blessing. It's not easy for most women who are working and, and cooking and fending and taking care of. Uh, their husbands, their children. Uh, and so what you do is you bring, it seems like you're bringing people back to just a, a basic fundamental conversation called, this is your life too. Let's, let's, let's take care of ourselves. How important do you feel that is today more than ever before, um, given the state of the world? Uh, well, I'm a single working mom, Richard, and uh, um, no one must forget that. I'm now a grandma, sure, uh, but but I used to commute. I know this is incredibly weird, but I used to co commute to the United States of America to work. So I, uh, Beatrice and usually often say to me right now, mom, thank heavens you taught us the responsibility of, of being true to what you really wanted to do, which was make, make a better uh, world, make a better planet, and also make it better for us that I could give them, you know, because of hard work. So yes, I, I do understand completely what it's like. And a lot of um, I, my next children's book, or, or my next 
book I'm going to write, and I just did it last week actually, is about mothering and how did I bring up two of the most uh, extraordinary girls who are also princesses, who also have the the daily um, male in their lives. <laughs> and, and, and so th- therefore, you know, you have to really give confidence. And, and it was a wonderful story with Mother Hale um, in Harlem. And she was fantastic. And I went to see her at Hale House. And uh, I went up the steps and there uh, opened the door and there was mirrors all the way, looking glass, all the way on the, on the skirting boards. And I went up to, to Mother Hale. I said, why have you got mirrors on the skirting boards? And she said, because no matter what age, these children are all abandoned. And, what, and no matter what age they are, whether they're just six months or whatever they are, you must always teach someone to love themselves. And so when they crawl around the floor and they look at these at themselves in the mirror, you go, aren't you beautiful? Aren't you wonderful? And I, I really have to thank um, Canada, the United States of America, and uh, for giving me my life back. Because, because of you, all of you, uh, my children are what they are today. Uh, I've never, uh, and that's why I've always told in honor of Her Majesty, who's one of the greatest mother-in-laws and the greatest grandmothers ever, is that I've always said I will work in the United States and I will uh, be in Great Britain as mum and, uh, and also giving back to Great Britain in the way of charity work, which is, which is what I started in 93 with children in crisis uh, education 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 you know your your journey it would appear and obviously we've witnessed and we are truly in love with you finding your voice and some have called that you know uh, uh, whether it's rediscovering Sarah or discovering Sarah but before I go there tell me as the only woman here on this call raising two princesses um, what do you think is the greatest challenge for young women today from your view given what's unfolded in this world and and, and, and culture we've got uh, trolling, cyberbullying. I ab- absolutely abhor the uh, keyboard warrior that feels they have a right to abuse and uh, and completely destroy a person, whether it be race, creed, color, or any other denomination, or whether I mean I'm a, I'm a redhead and I have been persecuted for sixty one years because redheads are weird and mad, you know. And uh, I believe that uh, the kindness. Uh, campaign, where which is my legacy, which will be bringing, uh, it's not EQ, it's not IQ, it's KQ into schools globally. That is my dream. And, uh, and I am ambassador for the Kindness Foundation. And I believe that when people say, what religion are you? What do you believe in? What do you do? I say kindness, because it, it just, you know, a, a smile of a child, health of a nation, from the heart. So you're talking to me, Richard, right now. I'm talking to you. I know there's lots of people, whatever, but but I'm right here, present with you, and and I'm really grateful. I, I'm really grateful. You talked about uh, Antonio, of course. I'm deeply grateful and absolutely deeply grateful to Lacey and 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 just teamwork. And you've got Kate over there who's listening. It's teamwork. It's about a group of people that have through the darkest periods of my life, they've never left me. Right. That is loyalty. It's integrity and it's kindness. And I believe that no matter what age, kindness should be on the curriculum. So so that's one of my 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 big things. So, yeah, I, I'm it drives me mad when when people say to me, oh, you know, oh, goodness, you're not nearly so fat as we thought saw in the pictures. And I know you're quite tall, really. And I keep thinking, well, what do you think? I mean, anyway, never mind. And so the trolling and and the 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 keyboard warrior it is the keyboard warrior if you've got something to say say it heaven's sake don't just pull someone down because you feel insecure or because you can't uh, can't can't get on with it for example just quickly because i don't want to take everybody's time because i can well, you know, there's uh, no question at all we're all delighted that you're here Okay, thank you. Well, um, Jerry, Ginger Spice, right? And uh, on the front of the newspaper, she looked beautiful and fabulous body and 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 she just looked fantastic. So um, everyone was coming up to me and saying, you should be more like Ginger Spice. And I and I went, yeah, well, I can't sing, but but hey ho, you know, us gingers, we stick together, you know. And um, and then somebody said, Oh yeah, but I'm sure this, I'm sure that. And I said, Do you know what? You're so wrong. I'm gonna go 
and find out who made that. She did yoga. I'm going to go and find that yoga teacher. I'm going to be lucky enough to give her a ring and I'm going to learn yoga. And I'm not going to not want to be like, I want to, of course I do. I want to be beautiful and fabulous, but I'm going to take her advice, take her inspiration. And so I did. And I learned some yoga and I thought to myself, that's the way. You don't want to pull someone down. You want to join them. You want to help them. You want to be with them and you want to, you want to have joy. I'm Richard. The trouble is, as everyone's listening, but I'm just full of joy. I just like joy bubbles. But there is, it is difficult because you have to absolutely decide to be in joy. Or you can decide to be miserable if you want, but but you've got to make that decision. And it is hard sometimes. Yeah, Duchess, I have to admit right now, just to pause, um, uh, you know, um, joy bubbles. This is not that kind of conversation. This is uh, PG-13. We're keeping it about you and your legacy. Um, but with all kidding aside, folks, if you're just joining us, we're here with the Duchess of York, uh, Sarah Ferguson, uh, Duchy. Uh, Fergie, she, I mean, Fergie, she's been called many things, but but lovely is what she's called right now. Uh, we're so delighted to have you. Um, you know, tell me in in in. Can I ask un- you one? Of can course. I ask you, what what did I say wrong? Did I say joy bubbles was wrong? I didn't. I didn't say that. I just. I just felt oh. that was that was quite nice. I might trademark that and put it into a oh. bumper picture. But but we'll go 50-50 on it. Okay, fine. Well, that's good to know. Thank you very much. Okay. Oh, by the way, um, is it too bright? Should I keep moving around? Because it's for, for once in England, it's a sunny day. Is no, it first, right? of all, first of all, you're lovely. You're And you're observing St. Patrick's Day, I must say. Uh, I'm wearing, got- yeah, I'm wearing green too, but I can't show you where. And um, and with all that <laughs> being said, <laughs> is, is that it's just a delight to have you. But, but, but as... as- um, Wait, that mountain is Everest and I climbed it. I climbed to 20, 24,000 feet just just above Everest Base Camp behind yeah. me. That there. is delightful. Uh, well, I'll show you afterwards, everybody. As a Canadian, I would love to toboggan there one day, but um, but but all kidding aside, um, your voice, it's so powerful, it's so strong. And, and it would appear that if anyone were to research and study your history, um, it was something that perhaps you were ridiculed for or made wrong about, for, for being so voice rich, having a stand, having a purpose. Do you feel that today at 61 and growing younger, uh, that your voice now has a place and a purpose that's more, more powerful than ever? And if so, has it been a reinvention of you or has it really been sort of like the the, the, the restoration of you? What would you say? Oh, Richard, you, you're asking all the best questions. You're a bit of a hero. Oh, stop. Uh, I won't argue. <laughs> um, the It took me a very, very great deal of time to wear the coat of many colors and uh, and to dare to be myself and to dare to find my voice because I I guess I thought to myself, oh, well, you, I was brought up in, in, an, in an era where my father would say, oh, shut up, no one wants to hear from you or you're a burden or you're a bore and all these things that he didn't know he was, it was wrong to bring up children like that. So uh, for me to be able to just uh, be myself and, and really just to express myself is a total joy. and. And it's fun because I don't come on here with a script talking to you, Richard. And like I, you know, gave you a hard time for I'm not unmuting me early enough. But I just, I, you know, it's, it, I, I think also uh, Lacey, who's on, has always, and Jan Miller have always been behind. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. I think totally giving me confidence and uh, having just become the first time novelist ever on August the 3rd, HarperCollins, of bringing out my, um, oh, hello. What's going on? I'm uh, bringing out my um, first time novel with William Morrow uh, under the uh, imprint with HarperCollins and Mills and Boone in this country. And uh, it's pretty exciting. So I'm writing uh, about a redheaded lady that rides side saddle in 1870. Mm-hmm. And uh, how she deals with uh, how she deals with uh, Scotland, uh, London life. Irish life and New York life and then back to Scotland. But of course, you've got to read the book. So I really see this as I'm, I'm uh, Brenda, by the way, if you're still on, could you please take this wonderful uh, book and make it into the next Bridgerton? Because yesterday I did a photo shoot just for everybody um, in this enormous, great big ball gown that I had loitering around in my cupboard, as you do, you know, of course you do. And, uh, and I just think it's so exciting to to, I really, really uh, believe this is a huge, huge, I think, I think bronze studios to do it. 
Absolutely. And, you know, Duchess, I have, I have to say, you've got a lot of women here who are also very inspired by just the sheer fact that, um, you know, given, given your history and where you went, you, you made it on your own and on your own terms. What, what would your advice be to your daughters? Should they decide to move on from family life, uh, from their current marriage, if they had to go and do it themselves, or if people that are on this call were going through a reinvention themselves or a restoration themselves, what advice would you give them today? Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Okay. But, All but, right. But you bound, I mean, look at you. Like, I mean, look at what you did. You, you found your own way on your own terms and, but, yep. but it was because I, it was heavily observed, it was also highly ridiculed. So how do, how does a woman do it today? Given the internet and social media and Facebook and Instagram. Now the, the best answer, right? The best answer is the truest answer. You just got to take one step at a time, mini steps. You got to be honest with yourself, really. And you've got to sit at the end of the bed and you've got to say, what do I want to achieve? Am I, okay, let's say losing weight, right? Well, don't keep saying, oh, well, I can't exercise because. Don't keep saying, oh, well, you know, I'm dairy free or I'm a vegan or a non-vegan, don't matter. No more excuses. You've got to get clear and honest with yourself. Once you've done that and you've set your wonderful, uh, given your soul the freedom to speak to yourself, like they say on the airplane, oxygen mask on yourself and then help the child. Uh, take many steps because to get to the top of Everest, you've got to go through the valleys. So there are going to be valleys. And, the, and sometimes also climbing Everest, you take two steps forward and one back because of the shingle and because of the way it is. But you will get there, but you just be patient and be kind to yourself. And I, that, that is the, I, there's no great aha, uh -huh, there's no great nugget except for what, what am I talking to you about, Richard? I'm talking about the journey to the authentic self, mm -hmm. becoming uh, the modern etiquette of, I, I'm, you and I have this, yeah, Bibi, I love Bibi, your mum, because, because she, brought you up to you can you can just scoot around edges by humor kindness and laughter and love but you can still get your message out i mean i'm talking to you right now and they, i don't know how many people are on or whatever and all the questions they can ask me hundreds of questions because I, if i didn't want to answer it i'd say you know what you'll get me into serious trouble if i answer that you know i didn't do anything wrong i wasn't impolite i wasn't rude but i'll just leave that one or something like that so it's a question of how you manage it. You know, what I love about what you're saying, and I'm here as, as really the byproduct of several promises I've made to those who are protecting you. And, and so I'm not here to break any of them. But what is delightful to hear you say <laughs> is that, that women, unlike men, we men, I can say this on behalf of men, because uh, I'm qualified as one, is that we lead by agenda. It's a result. We want power. There's something to get. Women, women lead with their heart. Your caregivers naturally, and 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 you want what you want, and you want the best for others first. But but it sounds like there's a shift in in that there's a view of of, of what you've come to call familyhood. Why don't we talk a bit about familyhood? Because a lot of people who are watching you, uh, Bronze Studios included, uh, know that you author books, uh, know you've been involved in some of the most incredible cartoon franchises. Uh, you stand for values. Uh, you stand for a little red. There's so many great stories that just continues to fortify that stand. But but why is that more now important than ever before from your perspective, Duchess? Well, thank you, Richard. Uh, the most important thing is that we are all unique. And, and don't try and be like Mrs. Jones next door or whoever next door. And by the way, you keep putting it, putting men down. I think, I think that I don't like that because men are really important for, to us and um, to all women, because otherwise, I mean, we can't always get dressed up for women. We want to get dressed up for a man to say, you look really nice. And I think it's important to honor that. I also think I've called it familyhood because, you know, same sex marriage is really important. Just be yourself. And if, and therefore you, you can't put a, a handle on someone being themselves, nor can you judge them. And therefore it's not motherhood. It's not fatherhood. It's familyhood. 
because you're in the hood, you know, and it's modern etiquette of how um, I have so many wonderful, wonderful friends who, who are in a same sex marriage and have beautiful children. And if I would do them such an injustice, if I said, oh, it's motherhood, because no, it's not. I think you can teach through familyhood the essence of how you can be a good uh, parent by listening by uh, turning the telephone off when you walk into the room, by putting your keys down at the table before you even go near them so that children now are listened to. They're taken seriously. And the f I go through the five points very quickly. As soon as my children came back from school, this is familyhood, I'd say, point one, did I annoy you? I'm so sorry, Did have I offended you? Mother, write this, right? was first to put herself down so they felt comfortable to say, yes, actually, you really were bossy and, and you gave me chocolate biscuits or whatever. Uh, number two is, is did your father annoy you? You know, did, was he whatever? Number three, uh, what about the teacher? How did you go on at school? Number four, were friends nice to you? And number five, how do you feel? So immediately the five point process, okay, means that suddenly you're present with your child. And, and so familyhood is about being present. And, and I always used to say in my uh, 12 years of going around the United States of America, I have seen more Greyhound bus stations, I can tell you, uh, that um, I always used to say when I was going there, I used to say, the most important thing is you, you can run off and get your coffee in your in your styrofoam cup, right? And I used to work for Wedgwood, right? But what about taking a moment to seat the tea in a teapot? And what about actually having a, a nice cup of tea? You can have a you can have a mug if you want, but I don't drink out of mugs. But anyway, anyone watching or listening want to um, drink out of their mug? Sure, but mm. and uh, and so I used to say, so I used to say, <laughs> so I used to say. You know what? Why don't you take three minutes, seep the tea, make a pot of tea, pour it. In those three minutes or five minutes, you will have found the solution to the problem you're worrying about. So instead of running so fast without saying goodbye to your family, uh, and then you might not see them again. And when I was, uh, I'll never forget it, um, Mum, when she said she's off to live in Argentina, and then we went to war, I was 12 years old, so I really lost her then. And uh, I'll never forget it. I used to say, Mom, I love you. And she used to say, oh, darling, don't be so emotional. You're so British, you know. Oh, it's fine. I, I'm fine, you know. Oh, stop it. Anyway, one, uh, once I remember very clearly, I said, Mom, I love you. I, I, I just love you. Please tell me you love me back. And she said, darling, I'm just going to the supermarket to get my steak. It's fine. You know I love you. I said, did you just say you love me, Mum? And she said, yes. And I said, good. Now I'm happy. And that was the last thing she ever said to me because she died on her way buying the steak. So had I not got her to say that, I have lived for the whole of my life knowing that Mum loved me. And, and, and so you'll see when people leave my house or whenever I say goodbye, Richard, when you come over with Nadia and Matteo, I won't leave the front door till you've gone out of sight because I will make sure that I'm waving. And normally I'm waving a white handkerchief because it, it just makes me laugh. And I think I took it from Ella, Ella Enchanted film. But anyway, but I just think it's so important that you take that moment when, you, when you're in a rush. I can't talk, darling, I can't talk. I've got to go, so many calls to do today. No, you, ha you haven't. Take a moment, take a breather and turn to your family and say, I love you. It's cool. You know, it's um, aside from beaming and, and aside from already uh, thinking to myself, uh, how delightful it'll be to, to, to wait in return with a white handkerchief as well. Um, I, I cannot help but notice that you have such a strong sense of self. And, um, and, it, and, and I mean, although I promise I wouldn't talk about the past, I can almost hear that your voice in some way shape or form over time, over your history, may have been muted, asked to tone it down or step back. Um, you know, this is not proper. And just by reference to your mother, you know, oh, darling, don't, don't, don't be so British and all those things, doing it as others would say. What, what do you feel is important about getting one's voice back? Because it sounds like this is the era in which everyone's finding their voice. And I do agree, by the way, men aren't to be blamed for things. I just think that we are, we should really just 
we're, we're all legends in our mind. So if we move over and let other people have some time to speak and find the legends in their mind, we all can live up to the standards that we've set for ourselves. Yeah. Correct. Correct. A hundred percent, Richard. Good one. Uh, so uh, I've forgotten what your question was now. Well, was it's, it's okay. I, I have no idea what I was really asking, quite frankly. So I'm delighted. I know. That I, yes. I, I, I'm going to help you out here because I can tell Please. that Lacey and Antonia and hundreds of people have rung you up and said, don't ask her about this. Don't ask her about that. She's not going to ask it. I, I'll answer anything. I can tell you. Don't worry, Richard. So, uh, yes, it has been incredibly difficult. It was very difficult. Uh, it, when it, I think I was 25 when uh, when I became a princess of the royal house. And uh, and I and I as you can see, I used I, I do have big expressions and uh, I still have them. And I remember everyone used to say to me, oh, don't make faces and don't say this and don't do that. and mustn't do this and mustn't do that. Blah, 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 blah. And in the end, I went, ah. and um, and it's good to be the return of Fergie. Here I am. So I am going to have expressions. I'm going to say my voice. And I think this is why I really love the modern age. I love 2021 because I can really express myself now. And I feel free to be able to do, if I want to wear uh, my or do my children's books, which I'm trying to look for things which are my normal fancy dress outfits I wear, um, then I can. And and it's okay to be me. It's, it's okay to be Sarah. Uh, and I, I suppose why I'm really talking to you, Richard, is I don't want everyone to wait till they're 61 to become themselves. And I also want them all to understand it's just okay to be yourself. And my girls, I'm so proud of them. When they ring me up, I go, well, good catch. Good catch. You're on the case because you, Beatrice and Eugenie, are complete, have done the work with me. And I'm proud of them because they catch themselves when they are going through things. They catch themselves. And I call it the toolkit. Uh, it's my toolkit. And, and so when uh, I always have time, Antonio always says to me, it's incredible. Every time your children ring, you no matter what you're doing, you stop and you're in, you, you, you listen and you're in good form. And I, and I say it's terribly important. Why should my problems be their problems? And therefore they're ringing. And how lovely they're ringing me and they ring every day, you know. And, really? and if they go through stuff, they say, oh, mom, you know, maybe my ego was up on this or maybe I felt that then. I said, mm, so you're not liking yourself today, are you? And then we go through it and then off they go, happy. No, absolutely. As, as we as we round, I can't even believe we're rounding out the final quarter of this conversation. So delighted that you joined us. Um, so grateful for your time. And of course, on St. Patty's Day. Um, but, but but when we talk about your legacy, because that's what we're here for, we're, we're, we're talking about, okay, so great. Now that we think of the Duchess of York uh, 2.0 and, and what the, the, the greatest chapter in your life is going to look like, we, we've talked about familyhood. We've talked about uh, you really being an instrument of empowerment. Uh, and you've done that through education, through your publications and through your authorship. And now we see you emboldening people, being a stand, being a real voice, really saying, no, this is the way we should go. Uh, and as that continues to really unfold, what's the one thing you look forward to the most over the coming years, given that we are going to realize that legacy by design and not by default for you? Which would it be, Duchess? Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Uh, okay. It would it would be it would be to be the next Patch Adams Gesundheit. Yeah, it would be to go to St Jude's in Memphis and bring my uh, Fergie and friends and bring joy to children's faces. I, I the smile of a child. That is my legacy, and and I just I'm so excited by it because I really believe through my own mental health problems and through what I've been through in my life that now I'm free just to, to be red, redheaded and wearing green for, for St. Paddy's Day and just living my, living my dream. And my dream is to be the, the, the smile of a child. Then my, also my dream is the health nation because I, I, don't, I cannot look on television and see a child that's not drinking clean water. And so therefore I will go in search of the best clean water uh, pill that in five seconds or 30 seconds, there is one, by the way, um, that, um, that uh, we, can, uh, we can use in, the, in, in Africa and, all, and, and in India and all over the world. So uh, the smile of a child, the health of a nation from the heart. And as you can see, the S at the, above there 
is I'm holding my heart and I'm the megaphone for silent whispers. I believe that uh, if a child is starving or if a, if a child has nothing, I would like to go there, travel there, hold that child's hand and say, it's okay. I would like to be the bringer of hope through kindness. I, I love that. Me- and you're, <laughs> ferocious, you're ferociously creative, by the way. I love that uh, your office just shared this. And for those who are taking a look, I mean, uh, even when we last spoke, Duchess, that you were actually scribbling away and drawing and, and mind mapping. Um, what do you think will be in the way? What's the, what's, if you had to step back and think of the resistance in the world or where you could get stuck or where you could be stopped, um, what will you no longer have patience or time for? What will you say to that challenge or, or upset or speed bump? You say, not this time, not on my watch. What, what do you know will inevitably come your way that you say this time? No, no, no. No, you won't. I'm on my way. I, I've realized that um, because of being so insecure in the past and because I've listened to everybody else's advice, I didn't listen to my own advice and my own intuition, my own empowerment of Sarah as a woman myself. And now uh, I stop and I do the end of the bed thing and I say, hold on a minute. How do you actually feel? What do you feel? How are you? Me, Sarah. And once you fix this, then you can fix everything else. You can't re- keep reaching, as I call it, reaching for the answers. Don't reach for food. Don't reach for greed and ego and uh, anger and laziness. And uh, they're the greatest poisons of life is your own reaching for your own quest for to be perfect or to have the best or to, or to drive the fastest car. No, don't wait for the station. If you're on the train right now, don't wait for the next station. Oh, if only I could have a Mercedes Benz, then I'll be, then I'll be fine. No, 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 no. Get this right. The core, the absolute core of yourself. And then you, you, you can go from there. And by the way, it's not easy. It may sound easy, and I may be talking a lot about it, but it's it's a it's really hard because everything gets in the way. Your egos, your this, your that, you know, and and and, and yet it's the most extraordinary freeing place to to be able to talk to you straight like this without 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 worrying. But what helped you there? Only only because you you stepped in there. I want to make sure I just really round it out. What was it? Was it mentorship? Was it just doing the work? Was it coaches? Was it your network? Was it your friends? What was the? Uh, was there a single one dynamic that really helped you own who you are and where you've been? A lot. Twenty four years of therapy. <laughs> it's uh, it's twenty four years of all different kinds of trying to find the answer. And, you know, Indiana Jones and, in you know, all these looking for the golden fleece or whatever, it, whatever, he can't remember what he does. But yeah. it, yeah, that thing, whatever. But but it's, oh, I must go and get this. I must do that. I must climb Everest. Oh, right, you know, Sarah, what else? You know, Young Victoria is my film. Oh, yeah, okay, Sandra Powell made the costumes best. Oscar. No, Sarah, shut up. Shut the front door for a minute, Sarah. Just... Find the way to yourself. And, and it's taken a lot of work. And I, I feel very strongly for one of my wonderful people that's helped me, Anamika. She, um, I used to say to her, oh, I, you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, and of course I'm fine. Of course I'm fine. And she went, why don't you just call me back when you really want to talk to me authentically? And it's taken 24 years. But also I've been lucky enough, um, Oprah, um, very kindly, you know, we did the own network and we did a, six episodes and I went and saw Dr. Phil. I went and saw Martha Beck. I went and, t- you know, I, I went, really did the work I did. Uh, and that was very public uh, because I wanted uh, people to realize that it's okay to fail. It's okay just to be yourself. And we're not perfect. And we're all human. And we, you know, we, we do trip over the step. So no. get up and get on with it. No, absolutely. It, it would appear as we're beginning to wind down the conversation and I'll reserve some closing comments from Brenda Gilbert, uh, co-founder at Bronze Studios. I'd love for her uh, to find some words to describe her experience of you in, in the final uh, six minutes or so. Please, of course. 
Can I say one thing before Brenda comes on? Brenda, I've decided I'd like to be an actress. So you can put me in a film or, or, or actually you're not allowed to say actress, are you say actor? Um, put me, I, I want to do, I wouldn't mind doing some sort of like Hallmark films, you know, that sort of thing. So I'm very, I did Joey with, with Joey on Friends. And so I, I'd like to act. Let's, let's do some acting and uh, yeah, let's just keep going. Anyway. <laughs> it'll, it'll be lovely, but, but I mean, you know, okay. so maybe- this is where we'll get a bit creative and think of just sort of horizon thinking. Um, you know, Brenda, I've unmuted you. It's, it's again, a delight to have you join us here with a conversation with the Duchess. But, but I mean, I can see the Duchess really, truly traveling the world. Uh, she, she is a licensed helicopter pilot. It, it's, it's lapsed. She, she can renew it. But, but I mean, she could literally uh, pilot her own helicopter, jump out of it with a parachute, land safely, let the thing crash because we'll have a big budget for it. And, and then find herself anywhere in the world to have a cup of tea, to, ch- to chat about familyhood with any woman that is looking to rediscover and restore and reclaim her voice, her power, and to uh, see a world of possibility. What do you think of that, Brenda? Oh, did you see I did a round of applause, Richard? I, I, That's a round of applause. I, I got that. <laughs> I got that. I, I think it's just beautiful and really... Um, I took in everything that you said, um, Duchess, Duchy, Duchy Doodle, whatever you'd like to be called. I, of course, want to be very respectful, but I also have three children. And when we had founded Braun, when we'd opened up the doors of Braun um, and incorporated, I had a, not even a one month old baby on my hip and an eight year old and a five year old. So I, I didn't necessarily wait for the next train station. I did hop on that train. I did hop on with everybody. And also I'm on the mind side of bringing so many people along. So if the train is not big, there's not enough cars, let's build some more cars and bring as many people as we can. Um, so that in, in opportunities, which is just in terms of acting and making content out there, the sky's the limit. You know, let's let's talk about the books. Let's talk about what you've accomplished. Let's put it into a full length documentary. Let's um, make sure that we have accompanying pieces so we can really champion the things that you want to and make sure that it's not just the net proceeds from our particular projects go into these these um, projects. But let's make sure that there's an actual line item. So when we go talk to the networks when we go talk to the premium streamers, it's already a part of the conversation and not an afterthought. Uh, Brenda, can I speak, Richard, or have you unmuted me? No one's muted me in my life, but anyway, Brenda, (laughs) Brenda, I think we could have such a good time because I love this idea that that we go even like like do you remember uh what's uh, Richard Gere in uh, uh officer and a gentleman when he picks up Deborah Winger and takes her out of the factory let's go do that let's go to the middle of the poorest area or the worst worst place ever and make magic and document me on a donkey okay I'll ride a donkey I don't mind but let's just go and see if we can change and inspire uh familyhood to 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 realize the dream that you did when you had your uh six weeks four week old baby and you got on the train and you got more trucks on and you got more compartments and you just said right let's do it and i I, and and i think you are the finest example of what i'm trying to say (laughs) love it love it thank you brenda you know in closing uh duchess i mean i'm so grateful for your time and this is just the beginning of our journey our collaboration our partnership um, and for those who are writing down any notes, I, I want to just have you write down a few. Num- number one is that I find that commitment truly shows up when love is present. And, and because the Duchess really, truly produces and generates love for you and, and a keen interest and, a, and an authentic connection, she genuinely wants to produce love in, in her conversations. And so you want to write down the word love because I think that gives rise to great leadership. Uh, This is why now more than ever before, I'm witnessing you, Duchess, to be untethered, unhinged. And in your own words, let this dog hunt, unquote. (laughs) Well done. But did you tell them that I stole the the blue glass bottle from the from the hotel? (laughs) No, I no, I didn't. But now you just did. So. (laughs) But but we'll, we'll send them a check. I think we really should send them a check. Right, Antonia? But 
but for me, I want you to know that on behalf of everyone here, for those who are watching, especially because the conversation was themed for women, those who are mothers, uh, blessed to be, destined to become, or have decided not to be, those who are sisters, uh, those who are children, um, anyone here, especially that are females, that, to understand that this is the time for you to really harness the magic and power of getting whole, getting complete, and owning your life for what it was and for what it wasn't. Because this, everybody, at 61 years of age is an incredible living demonstration of what it's like to truly live life on your own terms, to live life by your own means. And uh, I just want to really acknowledge you for that, Duchess. Uh, it's a true pleasure you're to watch you. The Richard, uh, you're very, very charming. I'm going to tell BB. I'm going to rewrite my, no, I'm going to, I won't. I'll write another letter to BB. Say so she, she did good. She brought you up well. Um, just to let you know, write your own rule book is really important, a little uh, uh, step. And uh, the other day, a friend of Beatrice's um, said, I really need you to write a book about guilt and, and how do you not feel guilty about leaving your baby behind or going to work or and then you go to work and you miss your baby. And uh, I think that's a major subject for anyone uh, listening or watching is um, guilt is not a word in the Tibetan dictionary. His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, when I asked him, I can't feel so guilty. I've made so many mistakes. He went, well, I don't understand what you're talking about. I said, well, well, I feel guilty. And he went, no, it's not a word in the Tibetan dictionary. So wipe it out. And I went, oh, okay, that's clear. He said, no, it's not clear because it always rains in England. And, uh, and so I just love that sense that I made a pilgrimage. I made a BBC do two documentary about traveling through India to meet his holiness. It took me six weeks. And yes, my luggage did get stolen and it is in the back of some taxi rootling around Delhi. So yeah. That's okay. That's okay. But I'm going to say something that's probably the edgiest thing I didn't think I was going to say, but it, it's just occurred to me and I'm present to it. And we're both, both present human beings. It, it, it occurs to me in the closing moments we've got only two minutes left where, where thanks to the life you've lived and the life that you've endured and, and, and all those parts, both bright and dark. Um, I really have got to say, I acknowledge you for living that life you did because it gave life to the way other women now live their life. I think the gift that you gave at the expense of the life you've lived is really helping them be okay with, with, with the state of mind that they have, seek the help, get the therapy, talk about things, open the dialogue, follow the five rules, and just simply have a conversation with someone. And, and, and it's never too late. And, and I want to just acknowledge you for, for, for doing all of that for everyone here. And for those, I mean, millions more. And we're going to let and remind them that you did. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, thank you so much, Richard, because as you can see, we put a time limit on me, which is a big mistake because I, 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 I love this. I love to communicate. It's my favorite thing in the world. Uh, just to say, I could not agree more. And don't, it doesn't matter because it's only your ego that's hurt, isn't it? If you say, oh, my, Richard, I have no idea what's going on today. Oh, I don't know about this Zoom chat and did Liddy. It was really funny for anyone who's watching and listening out there. Um, Richard said, well, let's do this call in uh, April sometime. I went, April? I'm not waiting till April. We gotta go. This dog will hunt. That's when I said it. And I <laughs> I just I just think that this is true. Come on, everybody, wake up. We got this. And you can do this, but just be real with yourself first. And dare to say, I have no idea. By the way, by the way, um, Richard, anyone who's listening, or even you can you you're a very bright, brilliant businessman. Afterwards or sometime, could you please explain to me what SPACs are? Yes. Yes. Not now, should... but not now, but I really want to know because I yeah. think I think I should do lots of SPACs. Yeah, yes, we will. And in fact, I'm in the middle of one right now. And uh, there's, there's, we won't spat about it, but we will talk SPACs. And uh, even Aaron and I have a chat about it too, Brenda. So uh, a delight. But for those who don't know what that is, a special uh, purpose acquisition company. It's, it's a company that raises money to acquire publicly traded companies from the public. That's what it is in short. But with all that being, I mean, but but by the way, folks, have you not noticed something? I mean, some people might call this random and uh, flighty, or perhaps she's all, this is a woman that's not all over the place. This is a woman that wants to go to every place. She does not want to leave any corner of the earth or her imagination untouched, unspoken, or un, 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 unacquainted with, yeah? She doesn't want to leave any stone unturned in her life. And I think that that's a lesson I take away right now, even in this moment. Would you not agree, Duchess? 
I, well, I would totally agree, but I, I, I've got to go and get my three rings. I've got to catch you up to get the three rings and the NFL rings. And uh, but, but I, but isn't it fun? Don't well, you think? Just this conversation. Come on, I, I feel better from this conversation, and I'm the one who's talking to you. And so you have inspired me. And by the way, the nicest thing you've ever done, all of you, who, um, Brenda, thank you, is you've listened and taken me seriously. You've you've believed in that little Sarah, because sometimes little Sarah can be on the back burner because she probably puts herself on there too, by the way. But yeah. you've lived and and you've given me this opportunity. So my heavens, my heart is don't worry, I can't cry, won't cry, shan't cry. But it, it really touched by your enormous kindness. I'm Thank grateful you. for that. And and you know, this is this is what this is what it looks like, folks, when you stand for people. This is what it looks like when you really are, in fact, wanting to be the cause in someone's life and really being the force in them realizing and living their legacy. Um, I mean, in closing, uh, the book of I Ching puts it best. When, when two foreign substances come together and if there's a reaction, both are forever transformed. And Duchess, uh, we owe that reaction to you because you've delighted us. Uh, you've lifted us up. And I believe for all the women here and all things Braun Legacy going forward, we truly will want to go and live our best life ever starting now. So thank you so much. So very much. We love you. We are championing you. We are applauding for you. And this is what it looks like in case you don't know. Uh, we're applauding for you all over. Um, a real delight. Grateful for your time. Uh, happy St. Patty's Day. Please be safe. Um, and God bless you, the girls, and, and your beautiful God uh, grandchild uh, and all things you love in your life. Yeah. Thank you so much, Richard. Great to talk to you. And thank you all for tuning in. All right. Until next time, everybody, this has been Richard Dolan with the Duchess of York. Uh, thanks to all things Braun Legacy. Delighted to see what comes next because I guarantee you folks, Sarah, Fergie, Dutchie, she's just getting started. More <laughs> God bless everyone. Be safe. Bye, Richard. You're good at this. Bye. Oh, you're so lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. 